Welcome to Retro Machines. My name is Victor Bart, and in this video we're gonna build a retro LAN party network with HP Pro Curve switches. And I think I have enough switches uh, now, <laughs> so the LAN party setup will be a little bit overkill for 10100 clients and Pentium 3's. This video is sponsored by FS.com. They provided uh, network cables for this uh, LAN setup. So if you need uh, network cables, switches and other network related items, go check them out on fs.com. So let's show you what I have. I have 4 HP ProCurve 5308XL uh, chassis. They can take 8 uh, modules and they are pretty damn awesome for a retro LAN setup. And two of them were donated by Michael, so big thanks for that. And I bought this one on eBay for 60 pounds. And I bought this online for 50 euros with the one you uh, power over Ethernet power supply. And I want these two switches for 49 euros each on eBay. And also this switch I bought for around 50 euros on uh, eBay. And here I have a Pro Curve 2610 24. That is 24 ports 10100 and four ports uh, with gigabit and I bought two of them for seven and a half euros in a thrift shop and they work the same as the rest of the Pro Curve gear so this is a really nice addition to have even more ports I think I have a lot of ports I have three Pro Curve access points which uh, work with the 5300 series and the Wi-Fi controller so this will be the Wi-Fi network for the retro part and for the non-retro part of the network I gonna probably use this Cisco 1262 access point so people can uh, have some uh, internet on their phone or laptops to uh, search uh, for drivers and stuff like that so why did I choose the HP 5300 series because they are pretty damn awesome and they are super cheap of course the two donated switches and the rest was just super affordable but if you want to buy loose modules they ask still a lot of money for it but just buy a full switch with all the modules and you're fine the HP 5300s are layer 3 uh, switches so I can route between VLANs fully managed even SSH and HTTPS and a web menu so there are a lot of ways to configure them and what I really like about these switches is they are modular and I can build the switches up how I like so for example this module it just slides out and it has 16 gigabit ports with two SFP uh, ports so this is a full gigabit blade and we have 10 of them and here you have the uh, 24 port 10100 module this module is a pretty affordable module because why should you use 10100 still in a modern uh, setup I got 15 of them and even one with power over Ethernet so enough client ports in my network and then we have this oddity and this is just a 4 port gigabit module over uh, RG45 and I think this was more like a budget option over the fully uh, 16 port uh, blade but still it's good to have one and this module is also really awesome because this is 4 ports with SFP modules so I gonna use fiber optic between the core switches with 4 gigabyte trunks with cables from fs.com so we have a good backbone of 4 gigabyte links and then uh, 10100 to the clients but what also my plan is to make a VLAN on the network with gigabit ports for people that want to uh, live stream or want to plug in their laptop uh, to search something so it will be a retro network but also a modern network together with the VLANs so that's why I like to have the 4 gigabyte trunks there is a module with 10 gigabit but they are super hard to find so maybe in the future I will find two or four modules to have 10 gig links between uh, some switches but for now the 4 gigabyte trunks are more than enough 
Then we have this special module and this is just 24 ports 10100 but with power over Ethernet and you need to have a special cable to power it from here because without that cable it won't work with power over Ethernet and it's just a 10100 blade. But you also need the power supply for it and that's a separate 1U module and that is now here on the bottom of the rack and that is this big unit so without this big unit you can't have power over Ethernet on the HP 5300 series and to use the HP access points you need to have the Wi-Fi controller and that is this module and this blade is the most special blade in them because this one has a memory module and it is DDR1 and it has a compact flash card and a socketed CPU so uh, yeah let's take a look what's under here we have 256 DDR333 memory <laughs> so I can probably upgrade the memory if I need to I'm not sure if that is a good plan and also removing the CPU I'm not sure if this is the best plan but I want to see what's under it oh that's nice we have an AMD CPU. Let's see what this is. It's an AMD Athlon with super small letters. I looked up the model number of this uh, CPU on Google and there was no hit. There is something similar in number but a little bit different and that is a 2400 mobile and that one was running at 1.8 gigahertz so I think this is something similar but especially sold only to HP probably so nobody have seen this a specific CPU in the wild let's remove all the modules and all the modules are secured with two screws so it was a lot of screwing to get everything loose Here on the table we have the 34 modules and we have three styles of coolers and this is the most modern uh, version and you have this variation it's a little bit strange because this is the B version with a modern style cool block and these are both A versions this one with a square cooler and this one with a round cooler but they are the same cards and also with the SFP modules you also have both styles of the coolers on the same type of card. And on this card we still have the original foil on it. Which breaks in pieces now. And also on this 10100 module the original foil is on it. Not anymore. So let's design the network on the whiteboard and distribute all the modules and tell you how I gonna set it up. And it is set up like a medium compass network. So a little bit on the extreme overkill side but it will be nice on the LAN party. First of all we gonna make VLANs. Men gemeent VLAN 1. And then retro uh, VLAN. let's say 10 and then modern 20 and modern Wi-Fi and retro Wi-Fi something like this so we need to uh, distribute all the ports over the network because the retro uh, VLAN will be mostly 10100 with some uh, 1 gigabit. The modern VLAN for streaming will be full gigabit. So here we have the core 1. And this is core 2, 3, 4. Here we have a list of all the modules. We have 6 modules with 4 SFP gigabit uh, connections. 10 modules with 16 ports RA45 and SFP 15 times 10124 ports and then we have some oddities like 24 port 
power over Ethernet 10100, the 4 port gigabit and the Wi-Fi controller. So these are 34 modules and we can fill up 44 spots. So let's see how we're gonna distribute it. And another thing is this one has two power supplies, this one also, this one also, and the other ones has all a single power supply, but all the power supplies can be changed out. So what I gonna do on the core one is we gonna put in three uh, of the four port SFP uh, modules. So let's call that the four SFP. And the other three modules will go in core two, three and four. And I'm gonna make four gigabyte trunks between the switches. So this is the backbone. Four gigabit, four gigabit, and four gigabit. And this will be uh, trunks with the fiber optic cables. So four cables, four cables, four cables. And FS.com uh, gave me uh, 12 cables of 30 meters to make this setup. And also 12 uh, cables of one meter to make the test setup in the studio. So I don't have to roll out 360 meter uh, fiber optic cable in my studio. Then in the core switch we're gonna put the 16 uh, gigabit modules. Uh, three times for the servers and like the high speed stuff and in the core 2, 3 and 4 we gonna put uh, two of those modules and then I will make VLAN so this will be uh, VLAN 20 for the modern stuff and this will be like VLAN 10 for the retro stuff so I gonna separate the modern and the retro machines in the network and have it running over the same infrastructure. And in the core one we probably have some management and clients so I'm gonna put two uh, blades of 24 ports 10100 also in there so we also have like the slower connections on that switch. Let's see then we co probably gonna put uh, in the other cores like three blades per uh, switch so we have 72 times 10 100 32 times a uh, gigabit and we have the 4 gigabit trunk so on core 2 3 and 4 we have the 4 gigabit trunks 32 uh, ports gigabit and 70 ports uh, 10 100 so that makes a really nice uh, setup with the core one that does the routing, then the three big ones. So what modules do I still have then? I have then one uh, 16 port gigabit module over, uh, four uh, 10 100 modules, and then the three uh, single cards. So that is eight modules and we have three chassis left over. And one chassis, this one will be just a spare so if we have problems we can take out the power supply and put it in one of the other switches or take out some modules from some switches put it in here configure it and have it up and running so i have two switches left over and eight modules so we can fill them all up so one will get uh, the 16 port uh, gigabit and 324 port 10 100 so this will be an extra switch if we will get a lot of clients it also has two SFP ports for uh, fiber or we can just use RGA45 uh, lines to it also with trunks. So it's good to have an extra one with a lot of ports. So then we have this switch and what we're gonna put in is all the extra cards and it makes sense to put them in this way so it has a uh, 4 gigabit uh, RA45 so we can make a 4 gigabyte trunk or just two lines and 2 gigabyte trunk it will get the Wi-Fi module it will get the 24 ports power over Ethernet to run the access points on it and then the leftover 24 port uh, blade so we have extra uh, 10 100 uh, ports so I think this will be a super epic network which can be expanded to pretty large LAN parties and we have also some uh, leftover spaces to put in more modules in the future if needed and I also have two 
HP 26 tens with 24 port 10 100 and two RA45 gigabits and two SFP modules. So if the space becomes too big that people need to run two long cables, I can use those 26 tens also in the network on some uh, places so the cable runs for the clients can be a little bit shorter and I can uh, just run them on a single gigabit line or for the redundancy just two gigabyte lines on fiber or RDA45 so it's really nice to have those switches to be flexible to put some extra ports in it and I also have a 2824 uh, HP fully gigabit also with SFP ports so probably if the modern network needs to have more ports I can use that one they are all HP Pro Curve switches so the configuration is all the same so I can easily uh, combine all those network equipment without any troubles and the Wi-Fi access points run over power over Ethernet so that can be on this switch and then we can make like a 2 gigabyte trunk that's more than enough uh, bandwidth and from this one to here we can make a 4 gigabyte trunk and then the 26 tens probably will just go on here and like on here on just kick a bit core switch will do all the VLAN routing and probably on my Sun X2100 I will make a DHCP server DNS wins probably Windows 2003 server and I will make dual Pentium 3 game servers I need to make a file server for on the network and they were all connected to the core I have a lot to do I think it's time to fill up the switches with modules To make the fiber optic connections you need to have SFP uh, modules and these are 1 gigabit uh, per second modules and here goes in the fiber cable and it slides into the switch but for HP switches you need to have HP compatible modules these modules came with the switches and are for sure compatible and for the shorter connections up to 300 meter you need to have SX modules 850 nm and you have also these modules they are LX modules for like long connections like 2 kilometer fibers and these run at 1310 nm but you can't mix them up and you need to have the right cable with the right module here we have 10 gigabyte SFP plus modules from fs.com these are also compatible with HP and this will be used for my home network because I'm upgrading my HP switches to 10 gigabit and on their website you can easily check which switch you have and which modules of fs.com will work and are tested and those modules are 25 euro each so not that expensive Right now I don't have enough rubber dust plugs to uh, prevent dust coming into the fiber optic connections so I ordered them in China so if you don't have a cable in your SFP module you need to have a uh, rubber cover on it and also I put the covers here on the unused SFP ports so they can't get damaged but with old used SFP modules they can already be dirty so what I also uh, cut from fs.com uh, is this uh, neo clean stick and then you can clean all the connections and also on the cable side. I think this is a super handy tool on the LAN party if we have bad connections we can clean them and then probably it will run great. What I don't have is like the loop and that I can see how the image is on the connection but a stick like this for 50 euros is super handy to clean your connections if you deal with old gear FS sponsored the cables for the LAN party they are 30 meters OM350 125 multi-mode fiber patch cable and these are for the short SX connections so 
to not roll out 12 30 meter cables in my studio they also provided the smaller 1 meter patch cables they are also OM350 125 multi-mode fiber optic cable so let's install some fiber cables and before inserting them in the SFP modules you need to remove the little dust plugs and also keep the dust plugs for storing the cables so you simply click it in and then the other side can go to the second switch The four core switches are now configured but I only have two of them running because I still have problems with the power in my studio and tripping uh, breakers. Maybe the power system in the home doesn't like the power supplies in these switches but I'm not sure. And I also configured one uh, HP 2610 with just a 2 gigabyte trunk to test it out. So that's also working in the system. And I put all the modules in the Wi-Fi switch and the extra spare switch. It's running great and the fiber trunks here look uh, absolutely uh, amazing and they came with this plastic uh, things around the cables so I used them to bundle all the trunk cables and then with some velcro strips I made it uh, super nice looking but this is only temporary for uh, the configuration and in the real setup I will use the 30 meter cables from FS and all the connections were fine so I didn't have to use the cleaning stick on them so that is great with all the used equipment because not everything came with uh, the rubber protection uh, covers and I got rubber protection covers in from uh, AliExpress to uh, plug up all the unused holes. So let's configure the HP5304 with the Wi-Fi module in it and the power over Ethernet. And to use the power over Ethernet we need to remove this uh, metal uh, clip. <coughs> and then we take this special power cable and we plug it here in the power over Ethernet module. And then we take this clumsy power cable to the rear of the power supply uh, uh, module and we have EPS1 and EPS2 and then we plug it in and we have also ports here to uh, power the 2610 and switches like that and then we take the pro curve access points and plug it in the uh, power over Ethernet module and it's getting cables catty now. Let's see if I can power this up without tripping the breakers. Okay, this unit is now running. Now the switch. Okay, that worked. Then we take the console cable that's on the Linux console uh, server, plug it into the COM port here. I really love the rack console in my server rack. So let's see if it's working. Okay, we are now in the switch. There's no password on the switch, so we don't have to reset it with the switches on front of the switch. So we can simply do an erase startup config. And that will reboot the system and bring it to the default configuration. Okay, then we go to the configure mode. VLAN 1 IP address 1010.5/24 and now the rest of the configuration I can do over Telnet and I made a whole script uh, what steps I want to take to configure this so let's see show running config we have the four uh, modules inside VLAN 1 with an IP address and it automatically made the VLAN 2100 for the Wi-Fi uh, system. Let's see, do I need to update the uh, firmware? 
The firmware is pretty up to date, but there is now an 11.43. And updating the firmware is super easy. The HP Pro Curve console commands are super easy to work with. And David Bombel has a free full course on HP Pro Curve how to configure it on his YouTube channel. So a link will be down in the description to his channel because he explains it way better than me. The access point is powered on over power over Ethernet and here on the switch we have a button and if we put on PoE the light here is uh, on so that is working. So the big power supply with clumsy cables is working. I'm gonna make a 2 gigabit trunk to this switch because we have only 4 gigabit uh, ports and the rest is all 10100 so the, also the Wi-Fi communicates over 10100 to the access points. The HP 5304 with the Wi-Fi module is also now up and running. It's a little bit overly complicated with the power supply for the power over Ethernet and a separate module and you need to have a very old uh, web browser to configure it from the web menu you can't do it from the console but they have a really good 45 page PDF on the HP website where they explain everything also some troubleshooting if you need to so I now have three access points connected all working and here on my tablet if we go uh, to the networks so we have a 45 Mbit connection WPA2 uh, security and IP address 101 0, 100. That comes from my uh, PFSense uh, box that's now operational between my normal network and the radio network. So, yeah, let's see if we can uh, play a video. So, without any problems. And I will link this video down in the description. The Wi-Fi is working, what I still need to do is setting up VLANs and more SSIDs. So I have a separate radar network and a separate modern network. And I think the modern network over 45 Mbit should be enough for phones and stuff like that. So people can search things on the internet or find a driver. I'm really happy with the Wi-Fi network of the 5300 system. It really makes the system a complete system with all the options. Here you have it, my overkill LAN party setup based on HP Pro Curve switches with here the core switch with the three fiber trunks to the other three core switches. These will go uh, on the client tables. So the lower ports are for the retro clients, mostly 10100 but also Kikabit. If I find more Kikabyte blades in the future I will add them too. Here a uh, blade for the modern stuff for streaming and maybe a laptop to search some drivers. On top we have the retro Wi-Fi up to 54 uh, megabit but also 11 uh, megabit for really old stuff. So this is almost a complete HP 5300 uh, system with all the options. And it's now in a rack but on the LAN party it will not be in a rack but just uh, switches on tables. But for in the studio the rack is just uh, perfectly fine and I have a video about how I made this rack. And I think it really is an awesome rack for in my studio. So let's talk about the LAN party and my plans for it. Let's first talk about the date. The date will be set when it is possible again so after the lockdowns after everything is back to normal so probably 2022 2023 not sure yet but i don't gonna organize it in a lockdown or with restrictions i don't want it so we will wait till it's safe again till it's allowed again and we can meet up with maybe 50 to 60 people on the first LAN, maybe up to 100, depends on the location, depends on how many of you will come the first LAN. So my idea for the LAN party is a Pentium 3 LAN party. Of course AMD K7 and K6 are also allowed and as many CRTs that we can get together. 
So we're gonna play games from like 1998 to 2000 that runs on Pentium 3's. So if you have a Pentium 2 400 up to a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz, that is the range that I want to have on my LAN party. Of course, if you don't have that and you will bring like a Pentium 4 system, you are still allowed, but if we do competitions, you are not allowed to enter them. I'm not really gonna do the competitions myself, so maybe others want to organize competitions or challenges and then we can see if we can get some prizes or... So everything is open for that, we can just do what we want. I also want to have like a hardware meetup. So not only gaming but also checking uh, our systems and nerding out and selling parts or swapping parts. So the complete LAN party experience and, and then hang out and, and you can meet other people of course and talk to me and so yeah we will make it really into a social event also and not only gaming. So one of the locations that is maybe an option is the Home Computer Museum in Helmond. Uh, they already said, yeah, we like to host it. I think it's a good pace, but I still need to check out their new location. But it's still in lockdown, so that is a little bit difficult. But I have enough time to look around for it. But for now... I think I will see first if that is a good location and of course I will provide also Wi-Fi and network connections for modern systems because one third of the people that said I want to come will come from outside of the Netherlands some Swedish people, some Germans, some people from the UK, some Belgian people yeah I think that is the main people that said ah yeah I like to come so we also need to provide on the network some Wi-Fi for their phones and stuff. So my plan is to start the LAN party at Friday night till Sunday. So on Friday on the day itself we're gonna build it up. So if people want to come earlier and they want to help they are welcome. And then we can build it together and set it up. So we will have people for the power. Uh, I will probably do the network with Michael and I will do the servers and stuff. And we will find some people to do certain tasks on the LAN party so we can do it together. It, it's really for me something that I want to do with a team of people and just make it together instead of that a few persons do everything so also if you are on the LAN party and you want to help with things or have IDs we are open to it so yeah that's the LAN party so the games that we are going to play on the LAN party are like Quake 2, Unreal Tournament 99, uh, Red Alert, uh, Starcraft, Need for Speed, other racing games, other multiplayer games and of course Half-Life. I think one of the game servers will be a bootcamp without any limit so we can always log into the bootcamp and play it. I think that's the best map for Half-Life multiplayer and that's just awesome with 16 or more players. Yeah, I will have two uh, Pentium 3 game servers of course. Uh, the the Sun X2100 will probably in Windows 2000 serve for the DACP and stuff like that. I will make a PFSense box for the routing to the internet. And I think I don't give the retro clients internet. But I will have on the modern network internet access for laptops. Uh, so I think we don't really need to have the retro clients on the internet itself. Or maybe i'm not sure if it's possible we can s if we have like a big internet connection maybe we can set up that people can log in from the internet and join us but not sure about that on the first LAN party and if we have the connection for that so my dream is one day that we have a LAN party but also that people can join from outside over the internet 
and join us. So if you are in a country and you can't afford to fly over to the Netherlands, you can still enjoy the LAN party. I think that would be a dream goal for me if we can achieve that and have fun with the internet and the LAN party together. I hope you are now as excited as me to make a LAN party. Right now on the HP 5300 we have 384 10100 ports and we have the two 24 ports 10100 26 10 switches so we have over 400 ports 10100 <laughs> this is complete overkill network probably for a small compass uh, or a big company or <laughs> it's just ridiculous and we have 144 gigabit ports and of course the fiber optic ports so I think we have enough ports for the first LAN party <laughs> and if we need more we can just add more HP Pro Curve switches to the setup. But for now I think we have enough ports on the LAN party so everyone can have 8 <laughs> network ports or something if we do like 50 people on the LAN party. But my call is 50 to 60 people. A big thanks to FS.com for providing the fiber optic cables for the retro setup and all the other accessories. If you need network cables, SFP plus uh, modules, switches and all kinds of network accessories, go check them out. It's pretty affordable. So also for your home rack they have good solutions. The 30 meter fiber optic cable is 15 euros in their web shop. They ship worldwide, they have warehouses all over the world. My cables came from Germany, so no import duties to the Netherlands. Check them out, fs.com. If you like to support me, you can join me on Patreon. And for one dollar a month, you can get access to my awesome Discord server with now 31 people, so come and join us. It's a really cool community already and you can use my Amazon affiliated links. Thanks for watching.